Hey everybody, Seven here. And I'm seeing a lot of posts on various forums asking questions about some of the more specifics about farming. And I've even gotten some comments on some of my own videos asking me to do a more in-depth video on farming. So here I am. The very first thing that I should talk about is a lot of people are going to be saying, I don't have this building. If you missed my video on the 1.5 update that just came out, then this is the farm shed. And basically what had happened was they split up the barn into the barn and the farm shed. So the barn still does exist. It's just now the barn is strictly for threshing and turning various grains into flour or turning manure or rot into fertilizer. The regular barn worker things are now done at the barn and any farmer things are done at the farm. Here at the farm shed, you see that everybody who is assigned here is listed as a farmer. Now I can't click on any of them to change them from a farmer to a barn worker. And just like at the barn, I can't change any of the barn workers to farmers. I would just be assigning a new slot. So the reason that you won't have access to this just yet is some people play on the experimental test version available on Steam, and some people play on the open version. Now the console doesn't have the option to do these things. So some of the stuff that I'm talking about with this and with the 1.5 update, won't apply to you just yet, but it is coming. So for the PC players, the official statement was that these are coming to the open beta sometime before Christmas. Now, whether that means that the console players will receive it sometime before Christmas, I don't know, but rest assured that everyone will be getting these buildings. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is how the farmer is special versus every other worker that's in the game. So any other worker, they get up at seven o'clock in the morning, wander around, mill around, find little hangout huts like this, sit on benches, talk to other townsfolk, etc. And then at 8 a.m., they start walking off to their respective job sites. Now, for everybody except the farmer, their commute time doesn't matter. So they may live right here in town, and they may be a miner all the way out here at the mine. That is a considerable walk when you're not even running and just doing a regular on-foot walk but it doesn't matter for that miner because they will continue to produce resources the second that they hit their work time schedule. So even though they're gonna be walking and spending the majority of their day all the way walking back and forth, they're still going to be harvesting any sort of iron or copper or anything else that you assign them to. The same with any workshops or blacksmiths or anything like that. So it doesn't matter if their house is way down here or if their work site is way up here, they will begin producing whatever items you have set them to produce the second it hits 8 a.m. The farmers, however, are unique. They have to physically walk from their house, walk to the farm shed, get dressed and ready for work, and then go through a series of checks, which I'll be going through a little bit later. Then they have to physically walk out with a bag or a hoe or a scythe and start beginning to physically go through the actual animations of walking through the field, spreading the seeds, and you'll graphically be able to see them doing their progress. So that's something that sets the farmer apart from every other individual that you'll be working with. So when you're going for town planning, you don't have to worry about anybody's housing or house placement except for the farmer, because their house, you're going to want to put as close to the farm shed as you possibly can, and then you'll also want to place the farm fields as close to the farm shed as you possibly can as well, because it needs to be as close of a proximity as you can get daisy chained from farmer's house to farmer's work site, farmer's work site to farmer's field. What I'm seeing a lot of is people are asking, why are my farmers leaning up against the side of the wall or sweeping the floor or something like that when there's clearly work to be done? They'll have a field that's unsown, They'll have fertilizer thrown around that hasn't been plowed in, or they'll have crops out in the field that haven't been harvested, and they'll see someone just leaning up against the wall and not doing anything with their, their day. The very first thing would be to check some of the basics. Make sure that you have bags, make sure that you have fertilizer, make sure that you have seed or grain, or that you have the appropriate tools, a scythe, a hoe, etc. Make sure that you actually have those appropriate things. Now, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner the hammer and anvil thing. If you saw my What is this icon video, you'll understand that that means that there is something that can't be produced. Now, prior to the 1.5 update, 
or what you might be currently playing now, the hammer and anvil could be indicating that your farmer does not have an appropriate tool, does not have an appropriate seed, does not have fertilizer, etc. So you'd be able to go into the management tab, look to the status of the individuals that you have that are working as farmers, and here you'll see that all of my farmers have perfect status because they're all with the appropriate seeds, bags, etc. And you can see all the durability of the hoe, bag, and scythe. So everything's running just fine with this farming shed. Once you get access to the 1.5 update, you'll notice a new icon that could sometimes appear, which is kind of a silhouette of the farm shed, and it'll have a little sickle next to it too. So kind of like with that white icon of an anvil and a hammer, you'll see a similar one with sort of the outline of the farm shed with like a little sickle, and you'll see a red number below that. So when you see that icon, that'll mean that something is going wrong with your farmers. Another reason your farmers could be leaning up against a wall or sweeping the floor is that it could be the inappropriate season. If you look here at the wheat grain, it says that it can be sown into fields using a bag during spring or autumn. Every grain or every seed that you can sow into the field will tell you sometimes one, sometimes a handful of other seasons that it can be worked with. Most sowing happens in spring or autumn, with a few being able to be sown in summer or one being able to be sown in winter, those being the carrots. So if you don't see an icon, but you do see your farmers not doing anything, another reason could be an improper season, so they don't have actually anything to do. This is actually going to be especially common in winter. So if you go into the management tab and you move over to the right here, this is the field management tab. So here you can actually click on each individual field you have, monitor the status of it, and you can also set what type of plants you want to grow here. So here I can click on change plant type. All the various plants come up. And you can simply click and then click and drag in whatever shape or size that you want to have. And what this will do is every time your farmers show up to work, they will automatically replant, reharvest, resow. And this will basically ensure that this field is permanently whatever setup that you've set for this design. You can set them to any number of different plants that will have different sowing seasons, different harvesting seasons. It really doesn't matter because the farm worker will actually automatically know which season to sow, which season to harvest, and they'll take care of that for you. Now you can't alter the orchards in this manner from this screen. You have to actually go out to this field with a hoe, destroy the tree that is there, and then replant a new one. Here is another new icon. This one says, lower efficiency, farm shed far away. This is replacing the other icon of when the barn was too away, far away from a field. The only thing that the lower efficiency actually means, it does not mean that you will get less resources. It just means that, as I was discussing earlier, where how the farmer is special in that the walk time and the distance that they have to travel actually matters whereas every other worker it does not this is showing lower efficiency because a farm worker is going to have to walk all the way from their house to the farm from the farm to the field and this field is a little far away from the farm shed so it's going to take them just that little bit of lag time to get all the way out there start harvesting it someone else to walk all the way out there and start plowing etc so let's fast forward and skip through the winter, and then we'll start talking about how the farm workers prioritize things and what order in which they look at things. Because a lot of times I've also seen people say, well, I wanted them to start sowing this, but instead they were harvesting that, or I wanted them to start harvesting, but instead they were spreading fertilizer. And then we'll start talking about how the priorities work and what they think about first. Okay, so here we are at the farm shed. And we can see that the very first person that showed to work went to the first closest field that they had. So it's kind of tied between these two because they're both basically touching this building. So what she did was she was the first one to show up to work. She came in, walked from her house to here, got dressed, and she immediately started sewing because this is the closest field here. So here we have the second guy that shows up to work. He's going to start threshing. Then we had a third guy show up to work 
and they're all looking at what is the closest thing that I can do or what is the closest field that needs an action taken on it. So since he showed up, the fertilizing wasn't actually necessary just yet because he's threshing along and leaving this nice long pile of unfertilized dirt, but because there wasn't actually a block available for him to start fertilizing, he comes in, does his check of what's the closest field that needs work. He didn't actually see this one because someone was already assigned to harvest, and you can't have two workers doing the exact same task in the same field. So he said, someone is already doing the harvesting, so he comes over here to the next closest field. Oh, sowing needs to be done, so he got to work on sowing it. The fourth individual actually took an interesting path. She realized that all of the very closest fields here were already done with their work. This one, there's nothing to do. It's in the middle of its grow stage. This one is being sown currently. This one was being harvested but did not have a fertilizing location open to it. This one was also being sown. So because of the timing of just how quickly they all came in back to back, no one's actively fertilizing this one just yet, but the fourth person that came in actually walked off this way. So even though this field is far, far closer to this farming shed, she came over here and decided to help out on this side of the farm just because it was the next, next, next closest field that needed some kind of staging. So while if a field does have multiple jobs in it, they will harvest and then fertilize and then plow. They'll also sow if they have any fields that need sowing. But the ultimate thing is, what is the proximity to the farming shed? And basically that's the ultimate for what you need to know and remember for what it takes to make your farming more efficient is proximity. Proximity of the house to the farming shed and then proximity of the farming shed to the field. The proximity of the farming shed to the field is also then going to dictate how the farmers operate and what they're going to prioritize. And if I let this play out until summer, you'd see that again as well, where this is a flax field, so it will be harvestable, but if these farmers determine that this flax field is actually further away than these fruit trees that are over here, they'll actually count the distance and they know exactly to the meter just how far a field or an orchard or anything else is. So if the farmer determines that this orchard is actually closer than this flax field, the very, very first worker to show up here will go start picking fruit and then the second worker will come over here and start harvesting the flax. So I hope this answered any questions that you might have about farming, and I hope this made things simpler and easier for you, and maybe got rid of any of the struggles or hiccups that you're having with your farmers, or maybe why they weren't doing what you expected them to do or what you thought you were trying to tell them to do. So if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you want to see more of this, definitely please subscribe. And if you have any other questions or anything else you'd like to see demoed or shown, please definitely leave a comment. And I hope to see you in our playthrough series where we're going to be entering our first winter which should hopefully be uploading tonight, assuming I can get everything edited and uploaded in time. Anyway, this has been Seven. Thank you for watching. Bye.